Currently, only four teams make the college football playoffs, but what if all 126 teams had a shot at the title? I've ranked and seeded every team that's in NCAA football, and today, we're gonna see who wins the biggest college football playoff ever. It's twice the size of March Madness, with eight regions instead of four, and we're gonna see who the best team in college football is. In the round of 126, Georgia and Michigan got buys because they're undefeated, but every other team was subject to being upset, and that included one-seeded Tennessee. With with 20 seconds left, they only held a three-point lead over 16 seed USF, and even though it would go to overtime, magically healed Hendon Hooker was picked off and the Bulls pulled a UMBC. The first couple East Coast region games came down to the wire, but there wasn't much other drama over here. However, in the Mid-South, things got really crazy. Central Michigan came in as a 14 seed, but with this defensive stop, they knocked out Texas. And Maryland's home field advantage as a six seed didn't seem to make a difference as 11 seeded Georgia Southern pulled off the huge upset. The Hurricanes seemed to be back with this dominating win over 7 seed Oklahoma State, and after Bo Nix took care of business against Louisiana Tech, Oregon's path to the Sweet 16 looked easy. Apparently 12 seeded Arizona State finally got over Jaden Daniels' departure with this massive upset over Duke, and I think that game gave every other highly ranked team in the Southeast region a wake-up call because there weren't any other surprises here. In the Southwest region, with time winding down, Wisconsin Wisconsin quarterback Graham Mertz delivered an amazing dot on the Wildcats, but in the end, their last second comeback hopes fell short with a throw that could have never won them the game. The Minnesota crowd was silent as 12-seeded Tulsa annihilated them, and Cincinnati as a four-seed was in trouble. The Stanford kicker sealed the upset with this field goal, and my favorite team, Kentucky, struggled against Eastern Michigan. But fortunately, they left Kroger Field with a win. I don't know what it is about Appalachian State but they always seem to pull off upsets and this one came in the final seconds making the southwest the most chaotic region yet. As a 5 seed, James Madison barely survived against Bowling Green and there were so many close games. Middle Tennessee State was looking to surprise the nation by pulling away from Iowa in the final minutes and on the last play of the game, Spencer Patris proved why Cade McNamara was transferring in. Georgia Tech came yards short of beating Florida in the swamp and that would conclude the first game games in the Great Lakes region. There were still 24 left though in the 126 team first round, and I have to say this was going to be the longest I've ever spent recording a video, so make sure to smash that like button. Anyways, 13 seeded Boston College embarrassed Illinois on the road, and Vanderbilt was competing with SMU. The game ended up going to overtime, and for the first time in a while, the Commodores actually won something. The next matchup was closer than anyone ever expected it to be, as well as it also wound up going to overtime, but in the end, two-seeded Florida State survived with this interception, and I couldn't believe Temple almost pulled that off. Despite being the lower seed, the Spartans' offense pounded Marshall as they put up 58 points, and I was curious to see how well UCF did since they couldn't just claim they were the champions this time. Honestly, they could make a run as a four-seed, and in honor of Mike Leach, I'll also be rooting for Mississippi State today. On the last play of this game, Boise State made sure Indiana couldn't get a throw-off, and since Ack couldn't do anything against Kansas State, that officially made the Northeast region the most boring one. The final section in the round of 126 was the Northwest, and these teams were battling to see who would lose to Utah in the next round. In overtime, the Tigers put it away after an interception, and in the next game, Logan Boner was very hard to stop. His performance led to the Aggies upsetting five-seeded South Alabama, and Devin Leary and NC State barely got by Miami, Ohio. But the biggest surprises were three-seeded Troy losing to Kent State, and 11-seeded Southern Miss obliterating Coastal Carolina by 40 points. The Northwest region definitely didn't disappoint, and to start the round of 64, Logan Boner wasn't ready to finish quite yet. This upset win meant Utah State would face their rivals, one-seeded Utah, in the next round, and on the other side of the bracket, the Jayhawks knocked out Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams, so they advanced to play Southern Miss next. One-seeded Penn State also got eliminated early and the playoffs were starting to get very chaotic. UCF would take on Michigan State after this win and with the Wildcats pulling past East Carolina, the Northeast region was down to four teams. Boston College was not playing like they were a 13 seed as Texas Tech couldn't stop them and that meant they had Ohio State next. On the other side of the region, Louisville stunned Notre Dame and Vanderbilt had a late lead on two-seeded Florida State which in the end they would hold on to sending them into 
the round of 32. In the Plains region, it turns out 30 million can't buy you a national championship run as Michigan beat Texas A&M and the Wolverines' next opponent would be Purdue. Three-seeded LSU struggled against the Blue Raiders and that would cost them as Middle Tennessee State was playing better than an 11 seed. They pulled off the massive upset and they would face Oregon State next. BYU was in a tight battle with South Florida and the Bulls were looking to go on to the round of 32 as a 16 seed. With 19 seconds left, they took the lead and with this result, they'd taken down one-seeded Tennessee and eight-seeded BYU. But that wasn't the only exciting game in this region as Drake may prove that he was him with this late laser. He sent the game to overtime where his team would win and at the bottom of the bracket, Oklahoma stunned two-seeded Washington, which would wrap up the round of 64 in the East Coast region. Over in the Mid-South, there was only two seconds left and Washington State needed a miracle to win. Somehow, Donovan Ollie made the play of the tournament going 71 yards to the house, and in the next game, 14-seeded Central Michigan pulled it off. The Hurricanes started this one up by 14, but in typical Miami fashion, they blew their lead, and that would eliminate them from the playoffs. The Southeast region really didn't have any surprises, with every higher seed taking care of business except for Tulane as 7-seed Air Force got the win. But the biggest shocker was Arizona having a lead on Alabama in the fourth quarter, and they actually held on to it to take down the one seed. My team, Kentucky, played well against UTSA, knocking out the three seed early on, but unfortunately, the Tigers played better against Appalachian State than Michigan and Texas A&M, so going into the round of 32, my Wildcats had to take on two-seeded Clemson, and it came down to the wire. With three seconds left, DJ Ugalele found the open receiver, but he couldn't make it to the end zone, and Kentucky was the first team to make the Sweet 16. Their next opponent would be Arizona, but I had to get through all of the other round of 32 matchups first. With this win, three-seeded UCLA would be taking on Georgia next, and at this point in the playoffs, I can finally show every result of every game. Unfortunately, Central Michigan's run ended here, and North Carolina took a lead with 45 seconds left, which would be enough to knock out 16-seeded USF, who had an incredible run in the tournament. They'd be taking on Spencer Rattler for a spot in the Elite Eight, and many teams were still fighting for Sweet 16 spots. The top two seeds were cruising through the Great Lakes region with ease, and UCF kept their real championship hopes alive. Mississippi State was able to knock out two-seeded Kansas State, and Boston College, as a 13 seed, was trying their hardest to pull this one off. However, it wouldn't be easy because Ohio State kept responding right back, and the Eagles had their chance, but unfortunately, they couldn't deliver. Louisville's basketball team was terrible, so they were trying to make it up to their fans by advancing, and they did so by eliminating 10 seed Vanderbilt. Logan Boner was looking to keep pushing his Aggies forward, and with two minutes left in the game, he tied it up with one seeded Utah. However, after a kick return for a touchdown, he would have to do it again, and on fourth and five, Utah State's miraculous run ended. Kansas was the last team to advance to the Sweet 16, and somehow the four teams in the real college football playoffs were all still in. The first Elite Eight matchup was Georgia versus UCLA, and like everybody expected, the Bulldogs defense was just too good. Their next opponent would be Mississippi State, who wound up beating UCF by 20, and Oregon State was beating Michigan for a bit, but with about two minutes left, it was tied, and they needed to score, which is what they did here. It wouldn't matter, though, because J.J. McCarthy would single-handedly carry the Wolverines into overtime, and he continued to dominate with dots. He clearly wasn't willing to go out in the Sweet 16, and finally, in overtime six, Michigan's defense got the stop they needed to seal the game. Kansas played amazing throughout the playoffs, so I wasn't surprised they were tied with one-seeded Utah late in the game. This one also ended up going to overtime with Utes running back Tavion Thomas putting on a show, but it wasn't enough to beat the Jayhawks as their defense got the job done. Every game seemed like it was starting to come down to the final seconds, and this one was certainly no exception with Max Duggan doing what he does best. But Bo Nix moved Oregon all the way down the field in the match matter of just 20 seconds, and that would send his Ducks to the Elite Eight where they'd take on Drake May and four-seeded North Carolina. Louisville, like expected, struggled against Ohio State with this pick six midway through the second quarter being the highlight of the game, and to wrap up the Sweet 16, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Kentucky took a lead with about a minute left, 
but after they gave up a very late touchdown, I knew it was probably over, and as the last second Hail Mary attempt fell short, I got extremely sad. My favorite team made it so far just to lose to 9 seeded Arizona, but they certainly deserved it as in the Elite 8, they had a 14 point lead on Ohio State in the 4th quarter, which they'd hold on to to make the Final Four. Another shock was that Kansas had a 3 point lead on Michigan with 38 seconds left, and it seemed like the neutral sites were making all of the difference. On fourth down, the Jayhawks did what Oregon State couldn't, holding J.J. McCarthy, and that meant Arizona and Kansas was a Final Four matchup. On the other side of the bracket, Georgia continued their undefeated season against Mississippi State, and Drake may collapse, kind of like he did at the end of this year in real life. Due to that, Oregon advanced, the Final Four was set, and it seemed like the winner of this one would probably win it all. Oregon had a seven-point lead at the half, but with three minutes left, Georgia was would tie it, so quarterback Bo Nix had to lead Oregon down the field where they'd go up by three because they had a great kicker. However, despite the game being on the line on fourth down, Stetson Bennett slung it deep and found Dylan Bell for the go-ahead score, and that would eliminate the Ducks from the playoffs. Georgia was on to the national championship, and it looked like their opponent would be the Arizona Wildcats, but Kansas was not willing to go out without a fight after making it all the way to the Final Four. The Jayhawks held Arizona to three with about 50 seconds seconds left and they had their chance to come back, but they couldn't capitalize, so Arizona made it through to the big game. Georgia started by going up by three, and even though the Bulldogs kept getting deep into the red zone, they could only kick field goals, so Arizona was able to stay in it because it was a low-scoring game. Touchdowns certainly weren't coming easily, but Stetson Bennett finally got one for Georgia, and all of a sudden, with three minutes left in the game, it was starting to open up. On this play, Arizona got a huge third-down stop on the Bulldogs, but they got pinned back, they couldn't do anything with it, and they were forced to punt it back to Georgia, who got great field positioning. Then, with a minute left, Stetson Bennett thread the needle to the back of the end zone, so the game was in the hands of Jaden Delora and the Wildcat offense. He did a great job of leading them down the field in a short time frame, but inbounds plays like this would keep the clock draining fast, so there was really only one shot left, and Jaden Delora slung it to Jacob Cohen, but he was tackled just short of the end zone, so Georgia won like everybody expected they would. 